Now this is what you call a beach launch. How cool is that? So parked here on the beach. All we gotta do is untie these, get the tracks wheels out, push the kayak off the trailer, and that is what awaits us. Hopefully some fun fishing action. G'day everyone, it's Alan here from Fishing Mad and welcome to our Portland fishing special. I have just finished a four hour drive, got up this morning at 3.30 a.m. and we're here now, it's just on quarter to eight and we're gonna be launching here from Wally's boat ramp. Now, for those who don't know, Portland is up near Warrnambool Way. It is a worldwide renowned fishery. All year round, there's some pretty special species that you can target from tuna to kingfish and all of your natural bread and butter species here that grow in really good and big numbers and healthy sizes. So for us, we are here today, got a bit of a mission. I really want to get onto a kingfish, but on a kayak. So I've caught up with one of my really good mates, Russell Elton. He's a local in this area. He's gonna help me get onto some fish. And as I said, our goal is to get onto a kingfish, but to do so on the Hobie kayak. The kingfish are an amazing pelagic species. Pound for pound, they are one of the hardest fighting fish. They are like scud missiles in the ocean, unparalleled power. And to catch one of those on a kayak is going to be absolutely exceptional. That's what we're here for. You know what, those four hour drives feel like nothing. When you get to a place like this, the beautiful scenery, and you know what awaits you out there. Right behind us is where some of the really, really big fish of Victoria are. And you know what, you don't have to go out too far. So you can see over there to my right hand side, there's already a big patch of boats there. There are a couple of reefs in that area, only about five meters deep. But for guys like us on the kayaks, we don't need to pedal too far out. That's only about a 10 minute trip out there and we are dead smack in water that is prime and ready for big kingies. And you know what, a whole lot of other species as well from your trevally, your pinkies, and who knows what else. I'm super excited. I think this might be a really special day out in the water. So I do hope that you enjoy it. Very tiring uh, session out there. We're gonna be pedaling nonstop. So I've got the two trolling rod holders out the front there. We've got the cameras mounted as usual. One of the tricky things is when you're driving up from Melbourne four hours, and you're tangling with fish of all different sizes is picking the right gear. So I've got four outfits with me today. I've got just a light spin outfit there. That's just the twin power. And that has got a Daiwa double clutch 95 mil. So we're gonna be trolling that, hoping we can get onto a few Trevally and Pinkies. We then kind of move up the stack to my medium spin outfit. That's with the Stratic SW. And then we've got the seven inch Daiwa bait junkie jerk shad. That's in that blue and white color, which really represents the natural bait fish here that the kingfish are eating. That is on that weedless outfit. And then as we move, we've got a slightly heavier spin outfit. So this is the Therese with the Saragosa 6000. And then we've got the custom built, the really a bit large nine inch soft plastic there. And then to finish off, we've got our very heavy Shimano Therese 30 to 50 pound rod, the Saragosa 8000. Got that rigged with the Gamagatsu 70 and a little piece size sinker. And we'll put some squid strips on that. All right. What is the game plan today, mate? Oh, how are you going? Um, well, just hope to get a kingfish. We've seen um, tons of being caught over the last few days, so just got a couple of big soft plastics here. Heard they've been going on the soft plastics recently and some squid, so we'll get out there and see if we can smash one out of the kayak. It should be awesome. It's about a 10 or a 15 minute pedal out to get into some of those reefs there, which is really interesting. You go out and the reefs drop to all different types of depth. So what we are gonna do in that time frame beforehand is we're gonna grab out some of the light rods and we're gonna troll some hard body lures. This is a really good grounds for getting things like your trevally and your pinkies just trolling. So that's gonna be the game plan when we get up there. And that's just, I guess, kind of maximizing your time on the water. So rather than just rushing out there, what we'll do is we'll get that hard body lure in the water. There we go. Got a fish. Whoa, 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 Russ. Yep. Good fish, man. That was a first cast. And it's heavy, man. It's heavy. Oh, it's gone under the yak. Man, it's fighting hard. Yeah, they do. Oh. Oh, look at the rod bend. Trevally for sure. 
Look at the swimming action on them. They're so strong. You've got to keep them away from under the yak. Oh, they just don't give up all the way till the very end, these fish. Got him. That Trevally fights so hard. And they go on those really big bursts of speed and they'll go straight down running towards that kelp and the reef. And that's often where you get done and lose a few fish, which... Yeah, and the, and the sound has just lit up with stuff here. So, here we go. Got him. Here we go. Oh, this feels okay too. This is much heavier. It feels like a good fish. Oh. Get that drive out of the way. That's what I'm doing, mate. Geez, they're bloody strong, aren't they? Yeah. yeah big, no, big Trevor. First couple of happy days. Oh. Got him. <laughs> now on the soft plastic we're kind of muscling them i've got the slightly heavier rod my goodness this is fun we've been on the water for 10 minutes that's about four fish a couple of drops and i'll tell you what i'd be pretty happy just fighting and catching these fish all day oh yeah there's some splashing in front of us mate so let's follow the splashes your visual indicators are always the best guys you listen to stuff you watch stuff you see some bubbling water you hear some splashes that's where you want to put your plastic because that's where the fish are busting up and what's happening is your predatory fish in this case which is your trevally they are eating your smaller fish which is your little salmon and your bait trout and your bait fish oh look at that there's there's heaps of them in front of us so i'm going to just burn this in ah oh, get tangled oh look at them they're just here that's on the money come on Yep, <laughs> got him. Oh, here we go. Oh, nice pinky. <laughs> Very nice pinky. Ah, trying to lose it. There we go. Well, it has been non stop action packed. Just catching little pinkies like this as well. And what you're noticing is. You're seeing bubbling water everywhere. So obviously these guys are causing a muck, chasing all the bait fish and the school fish and having a feed of those. That's a legal sized fish, but we've got no interest in keeping a fish like that so he can swim away. And uh, all we want to do now is stay on top of where the fish are, get another plastic in there and catch another one. We're drifting around nice and slowly. You on? I know. Yep, yep. Oh, this is better. Oh. oh, no, nice Trevally. Another nice Trevor. Jeez, they... Oh, he's airborne. <laughs> There's another. What a beautiful fish. I know we came here for kingfish, and I know that all the boats up there, which are probably about 500 meters up, they're all there looking for kingfish. And you know what? The plan was to go straight out there, do a bit of trolling and hopefully find a couple of fish like this. Light gear, soft plastics. I'm absolutely in my element here. Beautiful calm waters, it's crystal clear. We're catching fish after fish like that. I am in no rush to get to that spot. There'll be plenty of time today. And whilst the bite is on and happening, So it's just, just to my right, just saw a big splash just then. Yep, got him. <laughs> oh, this is insane. Oh, I think he's, he's either heavy or he's done me. Oh no, this is a good fish, man. Ah, oh, he's gone under the yak. No, no, another Trevor. Look at the swimming action on them. They're so strong. You've got to keep them away from under the yak. Oh, they just don't give up all the way till the very end, these fish. Got him. There's another. Woo! It's raining Trevally. Now, if you haven't done a lot of 
Trevally fishing. One thing that's really fascinating, they get a parasite and then lives inside their mouth cavity, acting sort of as a tongue. And what they do is, as the Trevally feeds on stuff, they basically sit there and they eat a lot of that food. And what you happen is, when these fish actually die once you've caught them, you'll see you get a lot of these really nasty bugs that come out of their mouth, which is a real shame because they are such a beautiful fish. And um, geez, they fight hard. That is so, so much fun. And uh, oh, whilst the action is hot, we'll get this guy back in the water and let's catch a few more. So you can see guys, what I've done is I've created one, two, three, four waypoints everywhere that I've caught fish. And what I've got now is basically a labyrinth of areas that I know where the fish are holding. So obviously as you're on the ocean, even in calm conditions like this, you are drifting around a lot quicker and a lot faster than what you think. So by the time you catch fish and re-rig something up, you've probably moved 200 meters. By doing this, it allows, so look at that, I am right in between basically where all these catches have been. And that means, here we go, straight away. <laughs> what this means is you're fishing the area where you know the fish are holding, okay? So real basic things, this is what we teach in the members area is about just really focusing on, you know, when you find the fish, the hardest thing, oh, look at that, I was on. Um, the hardest thing is finding the fish. So when you find them, you want to make sure that you're using your tools to stay on top of them because you can have days where you're out on the water and you're, you, you know, you're pedaling for hours and hours and hours and you don't find them. And then you have moments like these and you find them, there's no point catching one and then losing them and then getting on with your day. What you might as well do is mark them, use your tools, set some waypoints, and then stay right on top of them. I have just swapped a rod outfit, so I've now got my, this is my two to five T curve and the uh, Twin Power 3000. And the drag on this thing sounds like a dream. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh here we go, look at this. Oh, he's gone. On the light stuff. Oh. <laughs> Listen to that drag. The only thing, if you get a big trevally, you're going to have a hard time getting him out of that weed. I love that. Uh... Oh, did you say getting out of the weed? I think he's done me. Oh, I think I got him. I got him. Yes. And the weed. <laughs> yeah. Got it. Oh, he's very yellow and golden, this one. There you go, there's another Trevally. Whoa! Ah, he's oh, got those... right through my finger. Yeah, those... yeah. Oh, look at this, here we go. Hear that twin power. Oh, just magnificent. You gotta muscle them a bit though, cause this is really light rod. You gotta keep them off the bottom. Oh, it's a nice pinky. Beautiful pinky. Yep. That's a panty. There you go. So there is a pinky on that light stuff. You can tell they've got those nice little head shakes. Such a beautiful fish. We're gonna let this beautiful fish go. So on your way, mate. And away, he swims away. Who's having fun? I hope you're enjoying it because I am having an absolute ball. I'm either on top of weed or on top of a school because look at that, it's thick. If that's fish or if that's bait above the surface because I'm Guessing that that thick red line is the surface, then, uh, oh, yep, yep, it is too. <laughs> oh my goodness. This is every single cast. And these are, it's swimming towards me. Here we go. It's going behind me, don't go behind me, come around. It's gonna be a trevally, you can tell by the way that swimming action, it does that downward circling action. And it definitely is. Now, stay away from that drive. Oh, it's another beautiful fish. <laughs> stay away from the drive. They won't give up until they're right at... Oh, look at this. Fish are cast. You remember I did a video a couple of weeks ago fishing at Queenscliff Harbour. Now, we only caught one and I kept going on about obviously how exciting that was on the light gear. So what I've done is I've switched rods. I've now gone to my really ultra light T curve with that little twin power 3000. We're catching plenty of fish of this size. It is just so much fun. So basically to go to a spot like that where you're land based fishing and now you're out in the kayak and you're basically surrounded by a school of them. The fact that you're catching nearly a fish like this every single cast on ultra light gear. Man, it's fun.
what a morning it is just an absolute pleasure to look at this i can see fish over there and um I can see splashes one two three four so just let that sink just close that bail arm just tighten up the slack a little bit here we go oh here we go. he's gonna go he's gonna go come on got him got him <laughs> Uh, this is what I'm saying guys, it's a fisher cast. We're not catching monsters and I know we're in Portland, yeah, we're here to tangle with with kingfish and we'll do that, but we're just catching so many beautiful fish. So this one's a pinky, it's not fighting as hard. It's actually a nice size pinky. So I might just see if I can uh, lift him up. Oh actually that's a really nice size pinky. There we go. Touch it. Before that, I was mm. chucking out and just getting his rod was bending straight away. Oh, here we go. Got him. Yeah. Okay. I spoke too soon. <laughs> just took a while for me to get Lewis. To get Sorry, mate. Oh. Oh, this is a good fish. Yes. <clears throat> oh, I think it's a good fish. Come here, mate. Yeah, nice trevally. Right. Oh. Look at that. <laughs> you got a trevally, I got a snapper. Oh, what? Oh, mate, I reckon I've caught 10 fish and 10 casts, the last 10 casts. And it's just cast it out, let it sit there for about 10 seconds. They're not aggressive strikes, and then you just lift up gently and. Oh. They're just sucking it in, aren't they? Yeah. Here we go, look at that. Make that 11 from 11. This one's not as big. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, and then they feel a tad bigger. Oh, he's... oh another Trevally. You almost jumped in the yak then. Put that over. Oh, that just come off. Got him. Oh. Fourth bit of plastic I pulled out of the water. Oh. Yeah, that's cool, oh, my. oh my god. That might be a big snapper. Oh. If it hasn't reefed you already, it's probably a snapper. No, nah, it hasn't reefed me. I can feel it. Here we go, now I'm giving it a bit more. Here we go, it's a good fish. What do we got? Oh. Oh. Now, have you heard that saying, left them biting? Well, unfortunately, that's exactly what we're gonna do. So we are just catching so many fish. It's insane how many fish we are catching. We have noticed that behind us, all the boats have started congregating all of a sudden in one area. To me, what that generally means is the kingfish are around. So it might be that one person has caught a kingfish and everyone comes swarming in. So this is a bit tricky when you're out in a kayak, you gotta really have your wits about you. But as I said, we've left them biting because we're gonna put this beautiful fish back in the water. See you matey, away he goes. And uh, man, it's hard to leave this because I'm having so much fun, but it's time to venture out now to about that, between sort of five and eight meters deep, get out the big soft plastics, the heavy duty gear, fingers crossed that we might be able to tangle with a kingfish. I'm only in one meter deep. This is all reef. And then what you're finding is all the boats are just sitting just outside this reef. So basically, again, you can see, look how shallow this is here. And then what happens, it'll drop straight down to about five meters deep. And what happens is in between those channels, that's where the kingfish come to eat. And this is why all the boats are hanging around just offside the reef. Wow, this is so shallow. I've got to be super careful here. Holy moly. I actually thought I was going to uh, hit the reef with my drive then. So uh, Russell's already out there in the distance trying to find a few.
Alan, I'm on. Yeah. I was going through it. No, no, that's the plastic that I hooked it on. No, I was going to say, I can see you've got your other bloody one there. I've got to try and re-rig up now. That burn it is just, I had to cut it. Or plastic, plastic, man. Yeah, yeah, plastic. Just trawling. He, he seen the gaff and he didn't like it. Yes. Bloody beautiful. Here we go. <laughs> yes. Yep, yep. Russell. Oh, look at you go. On the plastic, man. On the plastic? Yep. This is a really light rod. Whew. Here we go. Uh. Power is insane. Here it comes. Yes. Oh, it's a huge trevally, man. It's not a king at all. It's a massive trevally. All right, how is that? That is a beautiful trevally. It's definitely not the kingfish that we're after, but it took off like a rocket. Quickly picked up the rod out of the rod holder. It was peeling a bit of drag, I must admit. I was pretty damn excited. I thought that was gonna be the kingy that we're after, but this is a beautiful bycatch. These trevally punch way above their weight, and we've got kingfish being caught left, right, and center all around us at the moment. So I've sent a couple of double hookups and trickle hookups. So hopefully we get into the action.
Holy shit. Thank you. <laughs> That's a dream come true right there. Uh, Ross, Russell. I might need you, mate. can't steer me brothers ah. I just felt it pop as I was just turning around <laughs> tell you what talk about having some bad luck that bite has just started a lot of the boats now we're starting to get some catches Russell just caught one and my rudder the steering on both sides has packed it in so the rope Basically that allows you to steer on both sides is broken so I can no longer steer. I'm using the paddle to try and keep me in a straight line. It's just really dangerous when you're between all these boats because the boats do come right up to you. So it's making it really difficult and quite dangerous. The other thing as well is the chain on the Mirage Drive has actually snapped as well. So it means now that um, I'm a fair way out and this is effectively just a pedal kayak, which is fine when you're in the shallows and no one around, but when you've got big boats circling around you, it's just dangerous, so I'm so annoyed, so so annoyed right now. The float behind you there, Russell managed to get one, so we saved the day. Yours truly couldn't, but we have come back into the shallows, and I thought just to sort of get me in a, a little bit of a better mood, I'll just have a couple of flicks of soft plastics before we call it a day. And uh, second cast, beautiful fish. We're just going to let this one go, but man, I'm so spewing. I'm really, really spewing. You think of, I guess, the effort to get to these places, you know, it's the journey, the gear, the everything. And then when you're out there, when it's your moment to shine, your gear lets you down. Anyways, let's get this Trevally back in the water and I think we will be calling it quits and heading back into shore in a minute. Well, that concludes our day fishing at Portland. And you know what? I've had a lot of fun. Now, not everything has gone to the script, but you know what, it's sometimes that's just part of the journey, part of the adventure. If I had to summarize today out here at Portland, I would say that there were highs were really, really high and the lows were pretty low. So we started off our session out in the shallows, flicking soft plastics, trolling hard body lures, and we caught Trevelli after Trevelli after Trevelli. So much fun on the ultralight gear. The pinkies came in, the mullet came in, the salmon came in. It was a fisher cast there, probably for about two hours. It was so much fun. And then at that stage, we thought, you know what? What we need to do is leave the fish biting, head out down there to where all the boats are and try and get ourselves onto a kingfish. Had all the right gear, everything rigged up and ready to go. A credit to Russell, who got one straight away. A beautiful 78 kingy, which he caught on a Daiwa Bait Junkie Jerk Shad, seven inch, the one in the blue and white. So that was absolutely brilliant. But you know what? I've had an absolute ball. Every time you go out fishing, you learn something. There's something memorable that happens and I think this trip has had some really good highs and some really low lows. We'll take the Hobie out on the weekend and we will get that repaired at our local repair centre. I've had the rig now for about four years and it hasn't missed a bait. So you know what? I'm not too disappointed. Whilst I'm there, knowing me, I'll probably get a few upgrades as well. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I hope that you've enjoyed this Portland special. 
got to fish with one of my really good mates in Russell Alton. So make sure you go and check out his YouTube channel, which is Russell Alton's Kayak Fishing. Really good fish out here. He's a local in that area. So I do recommend that. And guys, as always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to go and check out our members area, which is www.fishingmad.com.au forward slash member. Guys, as always, there's lots of technical fishing workshops on there, technique specific videos. We break down different fishing techniques to help you catch fish. There are GPS coordinates, reports, our kayak club, tackle talks, and of course, our monthly giveaways, which has been a lot of rods and reels and really cool gear lately. So make sure you go and check that out. And until I see all of you out in the water next time, good fishing, everyone.